Hello everyone. I uh, just checked on Gateway's website just a little bit ago and I uh, was actually pleasantly surprised to see um, I'm waiting for my computer to respond here. Um, I will uh, as soon as Chrome wants to uh, cooperate here some reason my computer spiked at like 90% here. Alright. I should be able to drag this across. I f saw this! Which I was actually wasn't expecting to see when I got online here. But uh, this is um, Cisco's website, or Cisco's website. This is Gateway's website and uh, what Rebecca did, um, or Miss Marshner, however she wants to be referred to. Um, I emailed her and I said I had already started a YouTube channel discussing um, Cisco stuff and I was putting up some tutorials. I had talked to a couple people, I uh, friends with on LinkedIn and they said, well, why don't you throw some videos of it? You're really knowledgeable in Cisco. Why don't you take some of that knowledge and, you know, maybe you can help some people out that don't get it. So I was like, okay, cool. Sounds like a plan. So I, this is true. I am working towards my CCIE and I am in the class. So, um... Um, what I I saw that and it was like well maybe I should um, fill in some gaps for some people on um, some other things so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to discuss briefly um, as quickly as I can and as clearly as I can um, the different terms you're gonna see in uh, frame relay and what they are now frame relay itself is a um, it's a cloud concept, so it's an ISP, it's a service provider technology, and what it does is it, um, basically what you can do is it's a shared, it's a shared bandwidth cloud. So you can have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of users connecting off this thing, doing this all over the world, okay? This thing is massive, okay, with all the different places you can have connections coming out. And what they do is it allows users to connect to the cloud using the internet, using their provider's backbone to connect to other sites and stuff like that without having to trench their own dedicated connection to um, their site. So like you might have a site here in Milwaukee and you might have another site over here in say Florida. Okay. Well back in the day you used to have to buy a dedicated pipe to there. Um, and Dedicated pipes are expensive, where you have to trench underground, pay a dedicated service fee, and stuff like that. It was really expensive stuff. So, what the um, service providers did is they created a, um, I forget the actual technical term, I'll, I will look that up. But what they did is they took their bandwidth that they had available on their provider network and they pooled it into an area and they, call, they created this thing called Frame Relay. Now, uh, Frame Relay is the Big Brother to a, uh, inter um, a technology known as X.25, which is uh, old school technology. You don't see it anymore. I don't even think they s it's supported anymore anywhere I'm familiar with. So Frame Relay itself is kind of a dying. It's dying out. They're starting to phase it out to where like um, I work with AT&T on a regular basis. They're phasing it out. They're going to MPLS. They're going to BGP. You know other. Um, easier to work with routing protocols and um, uh, service provider technologies that are easier to to fluctuate and stuff like that. Um, now the draw here's a, I don't want to say drawbacks out of the gate, but Frame Relay itself is kind of a dying breed. And the thing with Frame, I actually I was going through the uh, four three fifty one for uh, the, the WAN section, so that you guys will actually have an idea of what's going on here and some of the configurations and that you'll run through but um, the idea with uh, frame relay it, back, well actually I should take one step back back in the day you used to have to buy a dedicated pipe it was a private connection between your locations and if you had more than one location you had a location here in New York maybe one up here in Canada or one here in California you know you used to have to have private connections to each one of these things and each one of these is money lots and lots of it so, you know, it might be 250 bucks per megabyte or megabit um, of bandwidth that was used and used to pay per per use. Now, 
that was not something easily swallowed by major companies. You know, you might have thousands of dial-in users to dial-in use a VPN access, and they would dial in using this technology. Well, that's a lot of money. Well, the service providers got together and said, okay, well, what we're going to do is we're going to create something called Frame Relay. Frame Relay is it's a layer two technology, and what they do is it's um, if you've ever watched a relay race on TV, you know, where you have, um, you've got the track, okay, you got the track, and you got the runners that start at the different positions, you know, so on and so forth in different lanes. What Frame Relay does is it, it's locally significant, for one thing. It's only significant to the interface on your router. So you might have two routers, two different DLCs which I'll get into the terminologies behind it, but Frame Relay, what it does is you have a connection out here to your building. Okay, I have to watch where my, my recording area is. What it does is it allows you to send information up to the frame cloud and then it jumps from frame switch to frame switch to frame switch until it finally leaves the frame cloud and drops off on your uh, wherever it's heading, whether it's your company, whether it's your uh, partner company, or whatever the case may be. But the point behind this is it allows you to share your bandwidth. If you're not using it, you're not getting charged for it. It's on demand when you need it. So it gives you a lot of scalability when it comes to um, having uh, multiple sites and stuff like that. So a lot of places they um, they like Frame Relay because the option of the Delsey, and you have the Delsey right here. I, I Delsey. That's actually that's how the DLCI. I everybody I've talked to in that deals with Frame, it's Delsey. So the concept behind the Delsey, it's the MAC address in the frame in the frame world. The MAC address is the you know the zero 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 dot zero one 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 dot two two one one. That's a MAC address. That's that's horrible writing. Now mind you, I'm writing with a mouse, so it's a little harder to write rather than it would be if I was using you know uh, a uh, a pen pad or whatever. But this right here is a MAC address, which is most people know is an Ethernet technology. Okay. If everybody uses a network cable to a network card to a switch or to a router, they have a MAC address that that's spe specific to. Now, what's the kicker with the MAC address? It's locally significant to that device. You're not going to have multiple MAC addresses um, and the same mul same MAC address in multiple areas because the information on your Ethernet network wouldn't know where to go. So, what do you? Well, how, how does how does that help? Well, what's the What's the benefit? Well, the benefit is its scalability. Let's say, for instance, you have an interface. You have a router here. You have a router here. You have a router here. Okay, this is Arizona. This is Texas, and this is Florida. Okay, I know they're not geographically in the same place, but the concept still applies. And you have connections to them, connections to them, and connections to them. What happens is you configure a um, Delsey on this guy. Your ISP actually gives you the Delsey to, to apply to it because it's got to be, um, uh, it's got a map to whatever the frame provider gives you. So the frame provider might have, this guy might be 301, this guy might be 205, and this guy might be 612. Okay. Um, on the frame provider side. Now on your side it might be 216. It might be 502. This guy might be 103. Um, Cisco by default uses 1023. Okay. So what ends up happening at this point is when you set up your frame connection with your service provider, the service provider says, okay, this is the Delsey you're going to assign to your interface. So you're going to go in there and you're going to say frame map and then IP address and then the IP address or the IP and then you know your your IP and then the Delsey number it's associated to that. So in this case we're in Texas we're going to say 216 and then what you're going to want to do 
is you're going to want to say broadcast. So you type in BR, BR tab, and or type out broadcast, however you want to do it. The idea behind that is it's going to send broadcasts, or actually a pseudo broadcast. It's actually, it's not a broadcast, it's a unicast. Out the interface, out this guy, outwards to the, pro the provider's network. The provider network is going to pull that up, and then it's going to come in on this guy's interface. And then once it comes in, this guy is going to take that, and for every interface that he leaves, he might go to this guy, and there might be another switch out here. This guy might be uh, 111, then he leaves and he shoots it out to 312, so on and so forth. The concept stays the same. Um, Delsies are locally significant. They are the MAC address to the frame world, where the MAC address is specific to the network card on your computer, your laptop, your switch, your router, your server. They're locally significant. The MAC address is unique on the um, Ethernet network. The Delsi is specific to the frame for the frame world. So that's that's basically how how it all how it lays out. Now I don't know how far back. Yeah, I thought it was gonna. Let's see if I can do. Ah, I love it when that works. I love that concept. It's so nice. So what that does is it gives you some flexibility. So like I said. Um, Delsies are locally significant. I should actually type down locally significant. So you can have, um, if you have a point to point connection, you can have this guy can be 111. This guy can be 111. Well, how, how is that going to work? Well, because of the fact that you've got to go through a, um, a switch to get there. So it may look like an actual point to point connection. This is what they tend to refer to as back to back frame relay. To where actually this this line right here isn't there. There's actually let me erase that. There's actually this. It goes to this guy. This guy comes to this guy. There's a frame switch right here. This guy is one one one. This guy might be six. This guy is seven. This guy is one one one. So it gives you a lot of scalability. You can have the same Delsi on multiple um, uh, interfaces because of the fact that they are locally significant. I know I keep saying that, but I want to try to drive that point home because a lot of people don't get that. They're like, well, I don't get it. Why is it locally significant? It's the MAC address and the frame world. Okay, so your Delsi is going to identify the MAC address it's leaving. Okay, so that's basically the easiest way to put it. So. As you're leaving, as, as, as you're sending information this way, it comes in on here. This guy it flips it over to this guy, number six. And this guy flips it over to, to seven, and then seven flips it to eleven. That's how back-to-back -back frame relay actually works. But um, that that's pretty much all I can say about uh, the Delsi. I mean, there's not much more I can um, I can go on about it because that's pretty much all there is to talk about. It's what it does. It is the MAC address of the frame world. Now you have LMI. There's three types. There are, um, you've got, let me type in here, you've got, um, what are they? They are ANSI, you've got Cisco, and you've got Q933A, which is also the same as ITU, I believe is the term. So, those are your um, inter interface types, and what the LMI is, if you're frame cloud, okay, and this is you, all right, so you have a connection to the frame cloud via frame relay, so you put encapsulation frame relay on here, this guy's already running frame, so this would be the frame cloud, so what ends up happening is the LMI on here is going to be, if you're using a Cisco router, it's Cisco by default. Now here, this guy might be using Q933, actually 933A. So Q933A is an industry standard, just like ANSI, um, except for it's a little older, I believe it is. ANSI is the newest Cisco is proprietary to Cisco devices. Um, uh, it's, it's I should I take that back. It's default. 
just like HDLC is default. It's not proprietary to Cisco. It's the default encapsulation type. So on uh, the LMI, well, what happens if this guy is Cisco and this guy is Q933A? What happens is that? Well, they don't talk the same language. The LMI has to be the same here as it is here. Okay, it's basically saying I'm on the same subnet as you. So in order to be, in order for this guy here to talk to this guy here, you have to be on the 10.1 network. Okay, 10.1.0.0 slash 30 network. Okay, let's say for instance on that. That, that's just how it is. The LMI has to match, has to match, or, or you will get, if you do a show frame PBC, it'll say inactive or deleted because it's not in the frame providers network so if you set up a router and you've already called the, the ISP and said hey listen I'm, I want to set up a frame connection with you guys they say okay great this is going to be your uh, connection speed this is the uh, local access rate you need to set up and I'm actually going to talk about this stuff here real quick um, you're going to end up uh, going in there and you need to set your LMI to Q933A and you say okay great you go under um, uh, under the interface, and you type in LMI Q933A or ITEF, I believe is one of them, and or it's is that, that that might be something else, but that's the that's the concept behind that. The LMI has to be the same here and here in order for your frame connection to come up with your provider. And the way you'll know that is if you go in there, you'll see show frame PVC. It'll show up as active in here. Active is good. Anything else is bad. If you see inactive, deleted, whatever else, um, or dynamic, um, it'll, it'll, still, it'll still say active, but it'll sort of dynamic means, and I'll talk about inverse ARP here in a second, but um, that's basically what you'll see. So let me delete all this and move on to the next topic at hand. And this guy right here is um, the committed information rate. Committed information rate is how fast of a connection you have to your provider. So let's say, for instance, you're... You know, you have the provider network here. I'm going to try to keep this one small. And you've got your router here. Okay, your R1. Now, your connection to them, right here, you, you pay for, say, 10 megabits per second. Bits per second. So you pay for 10 megabits per second. Your connection here might be, your interface might be, said for gig. You might be able to have, you might have a gig interface. Let's say for instance, okay, you have a gig interface, okay, gig, okay, you have a gig interface right here. Well, obviously, if your connection speed is 10 megabits per second, you can't send gig because this is not going to work. Well, how do you fix that? Well, real simple. You go under the interface and you uh, you do actually do a thing called frame relay shaping. It's called traffic shaping, and you tailor it back to where it only sends at 10 megabits per second. That is, the committed information rate is how fast the provider is sending information to you. So this way here is CIR. Actually, I should take that back. CIR is, is this way. Okay, and your uh, LAR is this way. That's how fast you're sending data out. So you can't send data out faster than your committed information rate across. Actually, committed information rate is is two-way traffic. So if you have a 10 meg circuit going to and from the, the frame provider, you can't have your local access rate higher than your ten, than your interface right here. Now there's more to it than just that, but that's at the CCNA level. That's all you need to worry about. Now there are there's a thing called uh, bursting where you have a 10 meg section, but you're allowed to burst to 15 meg and so forth but I'm not going to get into that because that goes way beyond anything you guys are going to need to worry about but there is this thing called bursting and let's say you're paying for 10 megabits per second per month and it costs you 400 bucks okay for frame service to your provider and for the, at that speed so what you what you would do in this case is you would um, uh, you have a bursting, and there, there's an algorithm that the provider is going to have set up to where if it's you go above that, then um, you pay 450. Okay, for the month, if you burst 10 days, oh, uh, you hit 150 or 15 megabits per second. So they have a, they have an algorithm that they look at your um, your 
you know you might your your usage might be like that so they'll say this right here is 10 megabits per second so the majority of your time you were below it but on this day this day this day and this day you came above it you broke 15 megabits per second so or you hit 15 megabits per second or you were anything above your um, your local your committed information rate you, you broke it you burst it above it so you have to pay extra for those days that's basically how that works um, now I kinda like this little feature right here that's kinda nice I always wondered how the guys that I follow did it and now I know so moving forward I hope I'm not losing anybody, and if I am, I apologize. You can always shoot me an email, rriker82 at yahoo.com, r-r-i-k-e-r-82 at yahoo.com. Um, shoot me an email or go into, um, if you're a Gateway student, go into the email, shoot me an email, be like, hey, I didn't quite grasp this, I'll go, I'll cover it again. But uh, I find a lot of people don't get frame relay, so you have to be... Uh, Reiterate, yeah, because it took me three, four times of watching the same video and you know trying to pick up on it. And I'll actually I'll show you the video before when I'm done of how I learned how it was done. And there's actually a lot of different people out there that, that practice frame relay because it's been around for so long. It's actually a pretty widely used, um, but it's actually being phased out now. Um, the big brother to frame relay is ATM, and then um, the big brother to ATM is MPLS, and MPLS is. Um, um, it's good because you can use any type of connection to connect to it and then there's one more above that and it's called Metro Ethernet and that's its whole other ball game but anyway moving forward PVC a permanent virtual circuit that is what you have when you have a frame connection to the provider and then you have a frame connection to a actually from through the frame provider to a, another uh, business or not to another business but to another branch office or something like that so if you have you right here you have the frame cloud right here, so this is provider network. Then you have, um, uh, that was horrible. You have another connection here. So you have this guy is going to here. Actually, I, should, I can't draw tonight. Do do do, and this guy is do do do. Okay, so um, a PVC. This right here is a PVC. Okay, and, and vice versa. It's two-way communication. This guy has to be on the same subnet as this guy. I think, pretty sure. Never been wrong on that one, but I'm pretty sure it has to be in the same subnet. And then what ends up happening is you can you uh, say this guy might be. Um, yeah, it does have to be in the same subnet. Now that I'm thinking about it, um, I'm just thinking because there's there's multiple different types of frame relay connections out there. You have point to multipoint, point to point, multipoint to multipoint. Uh, you have sub interfaces where you can have several um, uh, if they're in this if they're on the same subnet, yeah. Um, you can have multiple subnets. How do I want to explain that? I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. I don't want to bring up CC and P material in a CC and a class, but um, there's a when I get there, I'll, when I get the switching, I'll, I'll try to, to break it down. Um, but this is a PVC connection between two um, two DLCs, two people using frame relay to get uh, information across the wire. That's a permanent virtual circuit. Now, back in the day, they used to have an SVC, which is a switch virtual circuit. Um, but uh, they did away with that. The PVC came out and made things more scalable, more direct. Um, if you're not using your bandwidth in a PVC, somebody else may, and then when you decide to send information, then the uh, you your your uh, your bandwidth is always there. Is basically what that comes up. It's a shared bandwidth cloud, which means you can have multiple multiple uh, businesses, companies, users using the same bandwidth as you, and you have your little section. So you might have, you know, you might have. Uh, this might be the the pipe. It might be, you know, 50 gig. Let's just give it something outrageous. And you might have gigabits per second. You might have just a little, little, little bit up. This might be your 10 meg. Okay, that's 10 meg. Okay, and then you might have another guy over here that's using 25 meg, and then 25, and so forth. Then you might have a guy over here that's using has a one gig pipe, so it's one gig. 
there are people out there that pay for that but that, that's the idea it's you have your bandwidth that's dedicated to you all the time you're dedicated to it no one's going to be able to use it you're situated now I know I just said that it'll be out there somebody else might use it um, this is more of a theory perspective of it I've, I've never actually worked for an ISP so I don't exactly know how they do it but the concept is there that's basically the idea now a PVC if you ever go into a show frame PVC and you see it inactive or deleted bad never good you need to get a hold of your frame provider and be like hey um, it's showing PVC is down I can't get internet what's the deal then they'll look at their switch and they'll be like okay well you didn't pay your bill or they may have configured it wrong on their side or whatever the case may be and actually that's my next topic is frame release switching uh, we're gonna copy all this into here and voila so frame relay switching let's say for instance you have a router I know I use 2600s and uh, 2600 yeah 2600 and GNS3 and 2600 I think 2610s they have this capability now this is the whole back of the router and I'm not gonna be draw it to scale but I just want to kind of give you an idea of what you could do. Now, that's six ports. Now I'm going to draw. We'll draw five routers. Okay, these are my routers. Uh, no, I will not get an A for drawing, but it's not the point. So you have this guy comes to this guy. This guy goes to this guy. This guy goes to here. This guy goes to here. Then this guy goes to here. So what you end up doing is you take a. Um, uh, where did I put it? Um, Cisco Labs. Let me open up. Uh, let's see how far I have to come down before I see it. Um, oh, wrong one. This is security. I want. I want the frame relay one. Here we go. Uh, scrolling, 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 everywhere we go scrolling. Um, as soon as I find it, I will point it out. Seeing it, I'm almost at the bottom of the document. Um, oh, wait a minute, maybe it's right here. Frame release switching. I don't think it was this far down, though. Troubleshooting frame relay. Uh, mappings. See the active right here. That's that's good. Active means it's up and running. Um. Hmm. Wasting time trying to find something. I don't see it. Oh, here it is. Frame relay. Configure frame release switches or frame re uh, a router as a switch. Um, this is actually a, a really good thing that you might want to do, to learn how to do in the um, in the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, certification world. If you really want to get familiar with something, this is a great way to do it. Uh, frame relay switching. You go to global config and set that up. You go under these, underneath the interface, and you say, um, uh, "Clock rate is 64,000. It's going to be frame relay. It's going to be encapsulation type, and um, you're going to put in there frame relay interface type is going to be DCE. It, the, the router you're going to connect to is going to be the um, 
uh, is going to be the frame switch. Then you type in frame relay route DELC 102 interface serial 001 out 201. Typically you want to have 102 to 201, 103 to 301, 104 to 401, 105 to 501, so on and so, so, on and so forth. And what you do is once you get all this configured in here, then you do no shutdown. And one thing I don't see in here is inverse ARP. You don't want to do it. You want to turn inverse ARP, inverse ARP off, because inverse ARP will automatically tie whatever is in the frame cloud to your router, and that could be bad. Um, but anyway, that's that's what I want to show you instead of having to write all that out. What frame relay switching allows you to do is allows you to take a router and emulate a WAN cloud. Um, you can do that either with GNS3 does it. Um, Packet Tracer will do it, but on a limited scale. Um, I typically like to do and everything I do in GNS3 uh, with Frame Relay in GNS3. Um, but basically, what this does is you configure a DLC on this guy right here, a DLC here, a DLC here, a DLC here, a DLC here. And what you do is inside here, you configure and you say uh, per interface, you set them up 102, 103. 104 and so on then you say it's going to route out 201 301 401 so on and so forth that's what you do you set up this way and then um, you want to turn inverse ARP off on these guys okay because what this will do this guy will say hey how's it going and be like, hey I have information for you hey give it to me so he'll say hey what's up i will say here you go and then you'll get a DELSI. You'll get 102 or 201 when it's supposed to be 301. So you need to be careful that you and the reason I say be careful because you might accidentally plug in the wrong the cable into the wrong port. This guy's supposed to be 201 you plug it into 301's port. So that's a bad thing because um, then you won't be able to you'll be pinging information into the wrong sides and it's just a big mess. So don't use inverse ARP. Um, turn inverse ARP off whenever possible. That's frame relay switching. There's not much to talk about because it acts like a switch. So, so moving forward, that's inverse ARP. It, like I said, it does uh, it does an ARP just like Ethernet will, and it'll say, "Hey, um, you want to get uh, like ARP?" What it'll do is it'll say, "This computer wants to talk through the switch out to this guy." This is port one, this is port two. This guy sends an ARP to this guy and says, hey, I want to talk to switch two. This guy says, um, it doesn't know, so it broadcasts out all ports. This guy says, okay, I know switch two, or computer two is on port two. This is computer one. It says, computer two is on port two, so it sends an ARP message, pulls the MAC address of this guy, sends it to this guy so this guy can forward it. That's what ARP does. Inverse ARP just does the opposite. It pulls the DELCs off of here. You know, you might have your DELCs up here, and then it sends it back out this way to this guy, and this guy picks it up and assigns it to him. So you'll um, you'll see dynamic inside of the assignment because it'll be a, a whole layout. You'll see a whole bunch of different things like, and then you'll see dynamic. You'll see dynamic laid in there, and dynamic means it was learned by via inverse ARP. That could be a good thing to some degree, but if you're like me and you're studying for the CCIE, you don't want inverse ARP, especially in a lab environment. But that's inverse ARP. The frame relay map command is actually a really cool. It's actually it's a very necessary thing. A frame relay map is you're gonna take um, on the let's say for instance you got a hub and spoke topology you got a hub and then it's going through a frame switch and then it's going to multiple other um, frame boxes or frame routers we're just going to draw a whole bunch in here just for the, the sake of argument what you're going to do is frame map is under here on the sub interface you're going to go in serial zero zero whatever serial whatever dot whatever and then you're going to type in frame relay map IP and you're going to map the IP address that you want to match on that subnet. So this is a point. This is a point to multipoint. So this is your point connection. These are your multipoint this way. 
equal to point this way this way that was a horrible arrow so multi point is here and then point to your single interface is right here so if your um, map command is right here and you say map frame relay map IP and then you put the IP address in here and you say the Delsey is going to leave so this might be uh, two this will be three this will be four five six seven eight nine ten eleven now you can't use zero through sixteen you just can't do that it just it doesn't work so like let's say for instance you use twenty two uh, twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven twenty eight twenty nine and then you got the thirty and then thirty one okay you would map each one of these. You'd have map statements for every IP address you want to reach in the Delsies, all the way down, and you put broadcast all the way down. Okay, the broadcast, and actually, if I pull up this guy, um, I don't know if it's in here or not. Right here, you type in um, frame relay map IP. You want to map 10.1.1.1.2 to Delsey 102. Your um, frame map commands this guy is going to have a del C of say 50 alright so this will be 50 and they'll all be the IP address whatever so if it's all the same subnet you know these guys are all going out the same subnet you'll be like x dot x dot x dot x and then 50 because it needs to go out the del C, del C 50 to get to these guys and then the switch will say 50 is mapped to all of these guys so depending on who's going to go to it'll say and then to get out serial whatever 13 it'll say go out and the the delsey on this guy is 31 so in order to get from here this guy knows to route 50 to 31 and 31 goes out and it gets it now the same thing applies on this side so you would, you would write in here uh, map um, and you type in map IP and then the the map the IP address and then the Delsey so 31 2 and you would map it to this interface right here you would take this IP address would be this guy's interface and then it would tell it how to get there it's the same concept except for in this case the MAC address is locally significant in a normal Ethernet network you would want to know this MAC address okay um, and that this would be the first step in the switch but actually I'm getting too I'm getting too technical with it you would want um, this guy if he was sending if it was Ethernet he would, he would want to know the MAC address of this guy and the switch would know that in its CAM table so it would send uh, an ARP message and say I want to send information to to this guy this guy says okay he already knows the MAC address for this guy so he knows that switch one uh, and I, I already explained to ARP but the same principle applies it would say okay um, I know that uh, PC2 is on port 2 this is the MAC address forwarded out this guy and I, I know I have frame relay inverse ARP in here twice but um, it is kind of a big deal in uh, when you're setting it up, because if you l map the wrong IP, the wrong Delsey to the wrong interface, you're going to have problems. That's pretty much frame relay the concepts behind it. Now, um, there's not a whole lot more I can talk about because of the fact that I'm not going to go through the, the, the configuration setup of a frame switch right now because it's getting kind of late and I want to get some CCIE stuff under the belt tonight because I'm done doing CCNA stuff for today. Let me uh, just kill all this. I love that thing, man. It's so cool. So, if you have any questions, give me a shout at rriker82 at yahoo.com. Um, if you need to know more about something else, let me know. I'll be more than happy to share. Um, that's pretty much it. So, I knew this was going to be one of those concepts to get people are going to get freaked out by it. It's really easy to understand. If you need help with anything. Now we're gonna blow this this sucker up here. We're gonna, we're gonna say 
INE.com. Go check them out. Um, they have a YouTube channel, uh, INE Training, or you can type in INE Training. They have an entire CCNA uh, course online taught by a triple CCIE, what I am aspiring to be. And uh, you can go up there and check their website out. Uh, if you want to, you can register for free. They have their own training right there. I'm not trying to take away from my training, but I'm not a CCIE. I don't have a, uh, CCIEs in route switch, service provider, and security. So um, if you feel like you're missing information or I didn't cover it quite well enough or whatever the case may be, go check them out. Um, and we'll uh, um, go from there. So. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.